this is Sean and this lesson's for you if you're already improvising a bit and looking for ways to improve your improvisation, especially rhythmically. So looking at the way you breathe in solos is really, really important. And there's a difference between the way the novice jazz pianist breathes and the way a professional jazz pianist breathes. So we're going to explore a few ideas. First of all, new improvisers normally breathe because the chords change on them. You know, so if I'm going to take a progression, let's say A half diminished, which means minus seven flat five, to D seven, then I'll go down a tone, G half diminished or minus seven flat five to C seven, F half diminished or minus seven flat five to B flat seven, and back to E flat. That's going to be the progression. So let's see. If the chords change, it'll often throw people. So, and then they've got to start again. And then they've got to start again. So that's one key reason why people breathe, why new people breathe. Or they tend to breathe in two bar sections or four bar sections. So they'll say, and it's not always wrong, but life doesn't always need to be like that. And the third reason that newer players breathe is simply when they run out of ideas. It's natural. Maybe professionals have to do that sometimes too. But let's take a look at the ways that a pro jazz musician might breathe. So first of all, they do it intentionally in order to vary the lengths of phrases. So let me play a few phrases that vary in length. So start short. One, two, three. So if everything isn't the same length, then those breaths mean a lot more. The spaces, the white space on the canvas means more than the paint sometimes. Another way that the professional breathe is in order to make the most of the chord changes. In other words, let's say we are going A half diminished to D7 and then G half diminished. There's no need to stop at the D7. Maybe we can play a little bit longer and get to the G half diminished. So. kind of thing. Or a professional breathes intentionally to create rhythmic interest. So let's say that we've got a phrase that's all eighth notes, all quavers. We could cut off the first note. So here's a here's a phrase that's all quavers or eighth notes means the same thing. Now let's cut off the first note. One, two, three, and already we've got something more interesting going on. And finally, of course, it's easy to forget that horn players physically need to breathe. And that's something that we can forget as pianists and we can end up playing far too long, you know, for no particular reason. So, you know, thinking and feeling that breath can really help. Now, funny enough, the recommendation I'm going to give you kind of may seem like it goes against what we're saying, because what I'm going to say is, try practicing continuous eighths or quavers in order to do something special. Not because we necessarily play like that, but it's a good way to practice getting in and out of trouble so that the chords don't tell you when you should breathe. You're used to playing over the chord changes. So practice continuous, like something like... it is. Not necessarily because we play like that, again, just to emphasize, but to give you the fluency to get over any chord change and get in and out of trouble so you're not dictated to. Okay. And then you end up playing the way you want. So for example, you might say begin on the third beat of the first bar and the chords change in the second bar. It's a different progression. So um, you maybe finish on the second beat of the second bar or something. So you've got one, two, three and four and one and two so you have more rhythmic freedom so practice getting in and out of trouble 
so you're free to start and end phrases wherever you want. Thanks a lot for watching.